introduction good morning teacher good morning students today we are going to start our new chapter breathing and exchange of gases can anybody tell me how do we breathe ma'am breathing is a process in which air is inhaled due to muscle contraction and then exhaled due to muscle relaxation very good rahul and what are the respiratory organs in humans ma'am humans have lungs which help them to exchange gases with environment very good rekha and what are the respiratory system disorders we don't know ma'am fine now i will tell you the whole process of respiration and its disorders in this lesson you will learn breathing and exchange of gases objectives at the end of this lesson you will be able to define respiratory organs describe human respiratory system describe mechanism of breathing define respiratory volumes and capacities describe exchange of gases describe transport of gases know about regulation of respiration list disorders of respiratory system respiratory organs the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between an organism and the external environment is called respiration the respiratory organs vary among different kinds of animals primary respiratory organs in adult vertebrates are external and internal gills swim bladders or lungs and skin common respiratory organs of invertebrates are trachea and gills human respiratory system humans have a pair of nostril just above the lips which leads to nasal chamber through nasal passage the nasal chamber opens into a cavity called nasopharynx nasopharynx open into trachea through glottis of the larynx region larynx is a cartilaginous structure at the top of the trachea contains elastic vocal cords that are the source of the vocal tone in speech the opening to the trachea is through a structure called glottis a thin flap of tissue called epiglottis prevents the entry of food into trachea during swallowing the trachea is lined with mucous membrane it traps any foreign particles at the lower end the trachea splits into two branches the left and right bronchi each bronchi is then split to form secondary and tertiary bronchi and bronchioles each bronchiole ends in tiny spongy sacs called alveoli the lungs are both encased in a double membrane called the pleura the pleura protect and cushion the lungs the path from nostril to the bronchioles constitutes the conducting part which transports the air to the alveoli and alveoli and its ducts form the exchange part of the respiratory system on the lower side of the lungs diaphragm is present diaphragm is a sheet of strong muscles lies at the bottom of the pleural cavity the diaphragm is absolutely necessary to the respiratory system mechanism of breathing breathing involves two stages inspiration and expiration during inspiration air moves into the lungs due to expansion of the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity expands due to the contraction of the diaphragm at the bottom of the rib cage and the contraction of the external intercostal muscles causing the ribs to move upwards and outwards the expansion of the thoracic cavity also increases thoracic volume and decreases thoracic pressure so that the net flow of air is down its pressure gradient and into the lungs during expiration relaxation of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles occurs due to which 
the pressure of the air inside the lungs becomes greater than the pressure of the air outside the body and air rushes out. Respiratory Volumes and Capacities Tidal Volume TV During normal breathing, the volume of gas inhaled or exhaled in each respiratory cycle is called the tidal volume. Inspiratory Reserve Volume IRV It is the volume of the additional gas that can be inhaled through forcible inspiration following a normal inspiration. Expiratory Reserve Volume ERV It is the volume of the additional gas that can be exhaled through forcible expiration. Residual Volume RV It is defined as the volume of a gas remains in the lungs after a maximal expiration. Respiratory Volumes and Capacities Inspiratory Capacity IC it is defined as the sum of the tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume. Expiratory capacity EC It is defined as the sum of the tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume. Functional residual capacity FRC It is defined as the sum of the expiratory reserve volume and residual volume. Vital capacity VC the volume of gas that can be forced out from the lungs at the end of maximum inhalation. Total lung capacity. The volume of gas within the lungs at the end of maximum inspiration. Exchange of gases. All living organisms exchange gases with the environment. Exchange of gases is necessary so that cells obtain the gases needed for metabolic processes and remove gaseous metabolic waste. Through respiration, gases exchange with the atmosphere via the blood. The partial pressure of oxygen in alveolar spaces in the lungs is greater than the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. So, oxygen diffuses into red blood cells from air in the lungs. Also, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood is greater than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the air in the lungs. So, carbon dioxide diffuses out from red blood cells into air in the lungs. Oxygen-rich blood reaches to the heart via pulmonary veins and then it is pumped to the body through systemic arteries. The partial pressure of oxygen in the body tissues is lower than the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. So, oxygen diffuses out from red blood cells at the body tissues. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood is lower than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the body tissues. So, CO2 diffuses into red blood cells. Oxygen-poor blood reaches the heart through systemic veins and then it is pumped to the lungs through pulmonary arteries where gas exchange again provides the blood with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Transport of gases The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place in between the lungs and blood. The greater part of oxygen diffuses into the blood and at the same time carbon dioxide diffuses out. Transport of oxygen About 97% of oxygen is carried by red blood cells. In RBC, oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a conjugated protein containing four heme groups and globin. Hemoglobin is purple colored, but oxyhemoglobin is of bright red color. Due to the partial pressure of oxygen gas, it readily combines with hemoglobin. The binding of oxygen to hemoglobin also depends upon partial pressure of carbon dioxide, hydrogen ion concentration, temperature and various other factors. The oxygen dissociation curve is a graph that shows the percent saturation of hemoglobin at various partial pressures of oxygen. Transport of carbon dioxide 
carbon dioxide is carried in the form of carbonic acid, bicarbonates of sodium and potassium as carbamino hemoglobin. The transport of carbon dioxide depends upon its partial pressure. Majority of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions. Carbon dioxide enters into red blood cells in the tissue capillaries where it combines with water to form carbonic acid. This reaction is catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase due to which carbonic acid dissociates into bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions. Regulation of respiration Respiration is regulated by neural mechanism. Neural mechanism involves respiratory centers, afferent and efferent nerves. Respiratory centers in the medulla oblongata and pons collect sensory information about the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood and determines the signals to be sent to the respiratory muscles. Disorders of Respiratory System Asthma is a chronic disease caused by allergies that constrict the bronchioles by including spasms in the muscle surrounding the lungs. Emphysema refers to the destruction of lung tissue with accompanying inflation of lungs due to trapped air. Occupational Respiratory Disorders a disease of the lungs that is caused by inhaling coal dust. Did you know? People who have large lung capacity can send oxygen to their body faster. Most vertebrate animals have two lungs. According to British Lung Foundation, in a day, the lung breathes in about 8,000 to 9,000 litres of air. Summary Let's summarize what we have learned. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between an organism and the external environment is called respiration. Breathing involves two stages that are inspiration and expiration. The volume of gas inhaled or exhaled in each respiratory cycle is called the tidal volume. Exchange of gases depends upon partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place in between the lungs and blood. About 97% of oxygen is carried by red blood cells. Majority of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions. Respiratory system disorders are asthma, Emphysema, Occupational Respiratory Disorders